Smasho here coming at you with the daily space weather. We've got most of our solar activity in the northern hemisphere. We've got kind of a high likelihood of coronal mass ejections. Likelihood of solar flares, I believe, has gone up also since yesterday. Is the sun going to destroy all of mankind? <sighs> well, in short, no. That is the last 24 hours in SDO composite. 335 plus 171 angstroms. Here's a close-up of these three massive sunspots. And really there are many more than three there. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's take a look at a full disk view yesterday plus today SDO continuum. Three huge umbrae there. One setting in the northwest. And a little bit of activity kicking up in between these two sunspots right here. That is sunspot group 3141, I believe it's called. There's your SDO magnetogram. And let's take a brief look at volcanoes. First, support the channel via clicks. Welcome to the Air Renaissance. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. Visit our links. You can find links to our alt tech sites, Facebook, Discord, Hemp Lucid, SureMed, and lots more. Check it out. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member of the Smash Team at smashamash.com slash smash team. We replace Patreon with our own superior website. Join at the gold or silver or annual gold up paid subscription level. There's also a bronze level. We do send out email notifications for disasters. So sign up for the email list if you like at smashamash.com. Also follow us on Twitter. Otherwise, you may not see certain things like shares of Aurora. Press like, subscribe, comment on YouTube, etc. Thanks to our YouTube subscribers for putting up with the pathetic censorship on the platform. And if you're viewing on BitChute, go over and subscribe over on YouTube. You're missing a bunch of the content. So here, let's go for volcanoes. Shivaluch continues to erupt in an explosive fashion and produce a 12,000-foot ash plume. It's a flight level 120 over Kamchatka. Suwano Sejima, satellite imagery not showing any volcanic ash. Don't assume it's not erupting. Popocatépetl exploding in central Mexico, producing a flight level 190. It's a 19,000-foot ash plume. Fuego in Guatemala exploding, 17,000-foot ash plume. Sangue in Ecuador exploding, 20,000-foot ash plume. Sabancaya in Peru also producing a flight level 250 as it explodes. It's a 25,000-foot plume of volcanic ash. Please don't pull vault the caldera. Next, looking at seismic activity. Seeing a bit of a 7-magnitude earthquake drought beginning to occur here. And no major quakes over the past 24 hours barely even making it into the five magnitude range. Although we have seen some quakes in California, keep in mind folks, California is indeed overdue for a large earthquake as one of our viewers cited yesterday. And any earthquake can be a foreshock. There's the largest quake of the past 24, I believe a 5.2 at Vanuatu. Second largest is that 5.0 at Chile that just came in. Getting back to space, here's some more composite imagery for you. That's SDO 1700 angstroms plus SDO 131 angstroms. And let's take a look at the classic ionized helium 304 angstroms wavelength. That is the last 24 from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. We have seen a small uptick here in the radio flux. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux now at 135 solar flux units. There is the one year chart to put that in context. The black line is the radio flux. The red line is the sunspot number. NOAA space weather enthusiast dashboard here, not forecasting any geomagnetic storms. A minor period of geomagnetic unrest there expected on uh, Thursday the 10th. Besides that, things looking pretty calm, I would tend to agree. Next, looking at the Earthly geospace for the past four hours. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from space. 
looks like a sudden drop off of the magnetohydrodynamic pressure there, which is what is modeled in this imagery. The units are nanopascals. Looks like a bit of a drop off of the solar wind must have just occurred. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. First, the uh, ground magnetic perturbations, Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Probably some good auroral imagery there showing up. We would love to see some auroral imagery, but we just keep seeing political nonsense and critique and praise of Elon Musk. Two things that I do not care about in the slightest. This is the last four hours of Earth's mag magnetic moment from the ground. Moving on to the planetary K index, and we're almost at geomagnetic unrest conditions. If we see the field increase, we could see a geomagnetic unrest. Current conditions are KP 3.67. The planetary K index is a measurement of global geomagnetism for all of you new viewers out there. And here's a real-time solar wind. Just subsiding here over the past 24 hours, it looks like. Solar wind density below one proton per cubic centimeter there at least as reported by the ACE. Solar wind speed dropping below 400 kilometers per second here, now at 372 kilometers per second. And let's move on. Ghost magnetometers there, looking a little spiky. You can expect to see that smooth out over the coming 24 hours. Again, the coronal hole high-speed stream has subsided. Earth resides in a south pole current sheet shown here in red. And the great, the great thing about the top view ecliptic plane field plot is that it is one of the, the best predictive data sets that we have. It's derived from 51 ground-based magnetometers, as well as magnetometers here at Lagrange 5 on stereo A and Lagrange 4 over here at stereo B. Here's our solar line of sight plot showing the solar magnetogram solar B field in blue. Solar polar fields in red for south, green for north. Which brings us to the coronal hole segment. What evil lurks in the depths of coronal holes? Well, solar wind. High-speed solar wind streams. Again, we do see one subsiding now. Those are south pole-oriented coronal holes primarily in the earth-facing zone. And here's a view from SDO in 211 angstroms. And let's move to sunspots next, which have been mostly stable over the past 24 hours. Again, most of the activity in the northern hemisphere. Let's take a look. Likelihood of coronal mass ejections very high. Likelihood of large solar flares kind of high, especially from sunspot 3141. There are a lot of opposite polarity umbrae there in between those two major umbrae. There's some imagery of that. Fantastic close-ups there in SDO continuum. And let's zoom out a little bit. There is the full disk view. We've got at least one sunspot in the southern hemisphere there. That one just formed in the past 24 hours, which is the time frame depicted. And we'll zoom back in a little bit here. That should include all the sunspot groups. And we've also thrown in the SDO magnetogram. Let's move on to energetic particles and flares. No energetic particles. The GOES proton flux remains flatlined. So we did have one long duration C-class flare that peaked at about 1510 yesterday. Didn't produce any relativistic particles. Here's the last 24 hours in SDO 94 angstroms. 
a very specific band of the ultraviolet spectrum, coinciding with one specific ionized species of iron. It's hot iron gas right there. And we've added 171 extrams here for your viewing pleasure. Number one, I order you to look at a star chart. Engage. This is what's going on over our head at Lehigh Valley at the moment. The location of the Smash News Network, least busted name of news. Once again, thanks for tuning in, folks, and congratulations on realizing the channel exists. It's only the most detailed space weather and comprehensive imagery of the closest star you'll find anywhere in the known universe. If you're up before dawn, you may see the moon setting and Mars chasing it as it remains near the galactic plane, which is the blue line we've seen here in this image. Yes, there you go. And let's move to a solar system forecast. Happy full moon, by the way. Here's the one week forecast for the solar system. We will still have a gibbous waning moon by the 15th. Next, looking at some coronagraphs, here is a sun diving comet. Also, Mercury showing up there in yesterday's coronagraph imagery from George Mason University. So that's yesterday, November 7th. Here is today, 17 frames. We've got a dearth of data. A dearth of data? We don't have a lot of data. We've got mountains of missing data. So check it out from Stereo A. Not a lot to show you here. It ends at 1753 yesterday. Anyway, we don't really see any CMEs. We don't see any of the Earth-directed variety or otherwise, really. It's been a very quiet day in terms of coronal mass ejections but don't expect that to continue and remember we don't need solar flares or sunspots to see coronal mass ejections they occur without either let's take a look at a ground-based solar observatory here this is El Tide Spain and look at all the filaments especially in the northwest also some huge filaments down here in the southern hemisphere Those could be headed your way at any moment. This one over here is looking a little bit unstable. And it looks like Fauci's filament has reformed to some degree. And let's continue on to show the last about two and a half hours from the AGO 16 SUVI. How about 171 Angstrom from the past 24 hours? It is indeed the house favorite wavelength. And thanks again for stargazing with us. Let's continue on here to the bonus feature segment. It's the satellites community dashboard. We have some surface charging hazards here moving into the central Pacific. That surface charging caused by low energy electrons on the outsides of satellites. And the GOES, electron the GOES electron flux here has crashed, as we forecasted yesterday. You can expect this next yellow diamond to be a little bit lower here than the NOAA forecast. Otherwise, no arguments with the NOAA forecast model there for relativistic electrons. There's the one-year graph to put it in context. That is from Solon.info. By the way, those electrons are measured at the F layer. They're measured at about 300 kilometers from the geosynchronous orbit of the GOES-16 and GOES-17, which orbit at about 22,500 miles of altitude. And here is the vibrational frequency of the F layer, the bridge between Earth and space. By the way, we're seeing some major electron anomalies over the U.S. We'll get to it.
First, let's take a look at the anomaly gram. That is anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median. We show it daily on the channel. Some rather persistent low-frequency anomalies happening there around South America. And here's the latest image. That's 1130 Universal Time Ionogram, 1130 Universal Time Ionogram, uh, Anomaly Gram, rather. And here's a total electron content forecast over the U.S., well, North America, really. It's the free electrons in between your GPS satellite and your handset, which is a distance of about 12.5, 12,500 miles. And we are seeing some anomalous electron flux over North America. It may be evident from this imagery. Or maybe not. Don't worry, we're going to show the standard deviation and the anomaly. So here's a standard deviation. It's literally an electron count. And here is the anomaly. So some significant anomalies there over places like Mexico. We'll let that play through one more time to make note of it. Also some anomalies over places like Pennsylvania. So some huge GPS errors likely to have occurred right overhead. Next, our latest intensity gram and latest SDO magnetogram. There you go. We do have a new active region rising down here. Let's take a look at that. No sunspots yet, but there is a new group right there. So a little bit of activity here continuing to rise. A little bit of a an uptick. Likelihood of solar flare is quite high, especially from this group right here. And let's take a zoom in on that. You can see a lot of magnetic field complexity happening there that raises the likelihood of large flares. How about one more series of images before we get into some pretty spectacular weather? As Florida and the southeast U.S. are about to get hit again with some tropical systems. Thanks for leaving a comment, Robert. Good morning to you as well. So that's SDO in three wavelengths. 211, 304, and 171 angstroms. And let's move to meteorology. Once again, thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network. Leave supposed to name a news. Don't forget to press like, subscribe, share, etc. And thanks for leaving a comment, Tin Man 1057 as well. So what we're looking at here is sea surface temperature as there is a bunch of hot water around Florida and it's going to cause this low pressure here to intensify right before it makes landfall so the winds are going to kick up just offshore in the coming days we'll show you a forecast for that here momentarily Let's switch to the regularly scheduled surface winds. More windy days over southern Australia. Those are the surface winds of the eastern world. Here are the jet streams of this side of the planet. Jet streams of the western world looking like this. Surface winds. There you go. Surface winds of the central world depicted here. A strong low in between Iceland and Ireland. And here is the jet stream scenario. Let's move on to show the sun rising. There, there's the day-night terminator coming up over the Atlantic as we look at the 3.9 nanometer infrared radiation map, which shows clouds and fog. 
as NASA uses Adobe Photoshop to make the Earth look spherical when everybody who watches our channel should be well aware that it is croissant-shaped. Yes, croissant-shaped. Stop believing NASA's lies. All right, so here we go. Here's our weather.gov map, and check out the winter weather warnings. There is the key if your county's lit. Click your county. Winter storm watch there for the Dakotas. Weather.gov. And we've got those tropical system warnings there. And so on. Winter warnings in the west. And this is what we're expecting to happen in terms of wind and pressure. You can see that is going to intensify as it hits the Bahamas. Just before getting to South Central Florida. It's also going to split in half according to the GFS model. That's a GFS 72 hour pressure and wind forecast. Here's the same model and period of time. Pressure and precipitation. And here is the same model, GFS. 72 hours total accumulated precipitation. Expecting upwards of four inches in some parts of Florida and some parts of Georgia. And let's take a look at the full view of the U.S. There's your total accumulated snow depth change in inches. And expecting another, oh, I don't know, 40 inches of snow for portions of California there. Dag. That is some serious snow forecasted. and over two feet forecasted for North Dakota. And that's only on November 11th. And let's continue on. Here's a Euro model. Let's see what the Euro model has to say. Not quite as heavy of a snow forecasted by the Euro model there. So huge disparity between the GFS and European model there for snowfall in the Dakotas. We'll have to see what happens as far as California goes. Quite a bit. There must be some melting going on as there's already 50 inches of snow in parts of Washington. Here's your lightning mapper. Let's move this up a little bit to the north. Show a little bit more of South America and take a look at a real time lightning map. Do we have any terrestrial strikes? Not so much. Off the coast of San Jose, a little bit of activity. Next time you hear thunder, check it out. Lightningmaps.org, powered by Blitzoltung.org. And here comes the final segments. Here come the final segments, I should say. There's your U.S. Doppler radar map. Let's press refresh. We'll focus on the lower 48. Here is the clouds and fog scenario. And here is the water vapor map. And here's your recap as we close out today's daily space weather. Vertical motion of water droplets and indeed snowflakes. Clouds and fog from the NASA GOES Interactive Weather Satellite Suite. And water vapor. That's where we'll close things out. Once again, thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash-A-Mash, signing off. And may that solar wind be at your back.